if you ever have a drinking problem and you come to DePauw, I put, you know, all my money that it's just going to get absolutely worse when you're here. Alcohol at DePauw, a WGRE News documentary with hosts Ken Owen and Ed Lehman. Good evening. I'm Ken Owen, and tonight Ed Lehman and myself will be exploring some of DePauw's attitudes concerning alcoholic beverages and their misuse. We'll talk to university administrators, a local bar owner, and students ranging from abstainers to self-admitted alcoholics. Perhaps it's best to begin at step one. Is there an alcohol problem at DePaul University? We asked Associate Dean of Students and Director of Fraternity Affairs, John Moore. Well, I think we have some issues relating to alcohol consumption on this campus that we do need to address. I think the extent to which it is a problem depends on somebody's perspective who's responding to that question. Law enforcement people have one perspective, students have another, faculty and staff would have still another, and I suppose in most cases even parents might have some reaction to that. But I think unquestionably that alcohol use is a casual enough thing at DePauw, and in too casual in some cases, that there is a, a, a need for us, I think, to examine the situation and not only get a better assessment of what, what is happening, but quite possibly to put forth some recommendations and to monitor some aspects of the situation more closely. Dean of Students Joan Clare thinks alcohol use is a part of college life, but does not think the situation at DePauw is anything to be alarmed about. The campus culture typically involves more drinking than other cultures. As a result, I think that some problems do exist. I think that it's important to keep drinking in perspective, uh, and I don't think that we have any worse problem than most other colleges and universities, and uh, it's not as bad as at many places. As chief of campus security, Grover Vaughn has the responsibility of keeping DePauw parties under control. Vaughn thinks alcohol is a problem for many students and often leads a person to commit criminal offenses. Well, I think probably, without a doubt, there are some students on the campus who have had problems with alcohol. I suspect there's some students on the campus, they probably don't know it, that are very close to being alcoholics. Most of the time when we find that uh, uh, vandalism on the campus is involved, and people that we pick up in connection with vandalism, particularly if it's students involved, we find that, that the use of alcohol is, is involved, and I think there's a, uh, well, we find that there's a definite correlation between uh, the use of alcohol and vandalism committed by students. Where can students who need counseling on their alcoholic tendencies go? Well, they're usually directed towards Tom and Carol Arner, who served at PAW as student counselors. Mrs. Arner says she counsels very few students with drinking problems. It's very infrequent that somebody will come in and say, I have a drinking problem and I need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's happened maybe twice in the four years that I've been here. And I think Tom's had a couple. So I'd say the outside of maybe five people in four years have done that, have come in sort of self-identified as this is the problem I need to talk to you about. There are some cases where other students have been concerned about an individual and come in to talk to us about it, but really not even very many of those. So I think that's part of the problem is that people don't perceive it as a problem. Many students complain that there isn't enough happening in Greencastle, and as Dean Moore believes, this makes the fraternity parties much bigger events. From a social standpoint, on weekend times, there are not many alternatives to the fraternity house party that to a large extent that's a significant part of the, uh, the campus social environment. It's only in the fraternity houses where there is a limited enough supervision and where it, it is felt that I think it indeed is okay and almost probably the obligations of the groups to sponsor at least some kind of events that bring in outsiders for uh, social purposes primarily but where alcohol use is certainly a part of it. And on those occasions, I think that, yeah, there are situations, there are problem drinking situations that frequently arise. Carol Arner reports that only five people have sought counseling in the past four years. If that's so, how deep can the problem be? Well, Ken, interestingly enough, last year, six senior psychology majors conducted a study of drinking patterns among DePauw students, and their findings differed with almost all of the administrators that we have heard from thus far. They came up with the following figures. 25% of the DePaul population contend that they get drunk almost every weekend. Approximately 25% of the DPU students drink in the morning 
And that same number admit to having suffered from a blackout at least once, which comes from an acute overconsumption of alcohol. A third of the DePaul population feel that one of their closest friends has a drinking problem, while at least 5% of the DPU population admit that they have a definite drinking problem. We now shift our attention away from the DePaul administration and out of the student body. We talked with a number of students, some considered themselves non-drinkers, others who averaged four drunken nights a week considered themselves social drinkers, and a few labeled themselves as problem drinkers. A self-proclaimed social drinker commented on his lifestyle. I drink probably four times a week, but it seems when you get together with people and stuff, you, you know, you got to drink to be social, and you have to be accepted, you know, and, and when you're standing there, you have to have a drink in your hand, and, and, and somebody will come up and pour it up again, you know, or if you're not drinking, somebody will say, hey, why aren't you drinking, you know, and I'll say you're kind of weird, so... Yeah, I'm a social drinker because I, it, it's just so necessary in, in the society, at the paw, you know, everywhere. Uh, would you say that you have a problem, though, of drinking four times a week, or would that be considered a problem, or are alcoholics something far away? Or No, I think I go on, on binges, you know. I, I think four times a week is even minimizing how much I drink sometimes. But, uh, no, no, I wouldn't say. I'd say four times a week sounds about right. And, uh, you know, with Thursday night, Friday nights, Saturday nights, and uh, now tonight, Monday nights. If the words of the social drinker alarm you, wait until you hear from the problem drinker. DePaul senior Robert Rabb was alcoholic in high school, and he spent ages 16 through 20 with an Alcoholics Anonymous group. Robert's freshman year, when he finally quit drinking, was a liquor-laden nightmare. The night of Tequila Sunrise, I, I broke my hand, and I went out to, to the party, and uh, I think I broke my hand around 9 o'clock or something, and just... I got totally blitzed until about four, until I went to the hospital, until I was literally feeling no pain. As far as I can remember, I was leading people to all the uh, keggers, I mean, just, you know, follow Rob. And the other problem was, everybody would leave, you know, around one o'clock, and, you know, where's Rob? And I'd wind up in the snow, in the bushes, on the front steps, you know. I used to make myself a doormat. Um, i trying to think of the guy's name was basketball player. His name's Greg Watson, big black guy. And I always remember it's like 3 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays, Saturday mornings or something. And I'd be laying on the second landing of Mason stairs. And he's just like, Ryan, you got to stop making yourself a carpet on the stairs, man. I'm tripping over you. And I'm just like, uh, you know, out of it. Can't even remember. Fell down the stairs. Fell down a whole flight of stairs. People thought I re-broke my hand. Just, God. I was dragged back from ozone, just unconscious practically. It was a mess. It was really a mess. Another student who wishes to remain anonymous says DePaul's social pressures have turned him into an alcoholic. I came to DePaul and it, it, I, it kind of seemed like really the thing, the thing to do, that something that everyone did and everyone had a good time with. For me, it was a means of acceptance. I really didn't have really anything else you know, to, to kind of use in my favor, I, I guess, here. So I, I looked at drinking, or I, or I turned to drinking as just kind of a way that I could associate and, you know, have a good time with everyone. Yeah, I'd like to say it was kind of a gradual thing, uh, but here I am, you know, and it's three years I've been here, and now I, you know, I, I, I feel that I drink a lot. Robert Rabb agrees that the DePaul environment promotes heavy drinking. Free booze all over the place. I couldn't believe it was paradise. If you already have a drinking problem and you come to DePaul, I'd put, you know, all my money that it's just going to get absolutely worse when you're here. The third category of student in our study of alcohol at DePaul are what some people refer to as the teetotalers, or those who abstain from drinking totally. One of Stainer told us of the pressures to drink inherent in the DePaul social environment. It seems to me the social events center around alcohol. So it's uh, yeah, there there is. If you want to be, if you want to more or less get in the mainstream of the social life, you uh, you do need to drink. But I've found that I can cope with that, and that uh, you know I just I, I'm I'm very hang very loose and uh, and you know have a good time without drinking, and, and people really don't uh, ostracize me for that. But at times you get a little pressure, you know, like, why aren't you drinking? We've talked to administrators about their impressions and students about their experiences, but now it's time to ask why. Why do students resort to drink? Our problem drinker thinks academic pressures are the root of alcohol abuse. I think a lot of the 
academic pressures that you know a lot of students are faced with here uh, I, I guess I can only speak for myself you know I, I've used drinking as a way to kind of it I, I started to use it as a way to escape that that tension you know and, and maybe anxiety you know that would be built up before an exam and it was just something that calmed my nerves down I, sometimes I even drink now before I go to class just in the fact that it puts me in a relaxed mood and I feel I can handle myself better. Approximately 90% of those surveyed by the senior psychology students correlated heavy drinking with periods of academic pressure. However, university counselor Carol Arner does not think the relation between academics and alcohol is a strong one. I guess I don't buy that explanation or something. I mean, it doesn't, somehow just doesn't feel right to me. And it's funny because a lot of people have this image that Tom and I spend a lot of time talking with people who are feeling horribly academically stressed. And it's just not the case, that that's not what we're talking to people about. And I think that people have sort of this image that deposits this horrendously academically stressful environment. And I just, I don't feel that, <laughs> you know, not compared to some other schools. And there's a tremendous, tremendous social pressure for people. I think if anything, that's heavier here than the academic pressure. But I just don't see people using alcohol to deal with the academic pressure. I don't, I mean, that would work anyway, but I don't think they're doing that. Have DePaul drinking habits changed drastically over the years? To find out, we spoke with a 1974 graduate and a part owner of D.B. Cooper's bar, Rusty Rhodes. It seems to everybody that DePaul students are drinking more, but to me, and actually being through, I was graduating in 74 and seeing the students drink then and seeing them drink now, there are still the same percentage of abusers. The difference is there's a lot more people coming to the bar because they find it's the only place they can socialize, seniors especially. They can't socialize you know, with other seniors in their living units because there's just not room, you know, you can't say, hey, come on guys, let's get, you know, 20 guys and go up to my room, there's just not space. So they find the bar are complete uh, outside of DePaul place that they can uh, socialize and it's important to them. People didn't begin drinking yesterday at DePaul. This documentary has presented the wide variance in opinion as to whether or not there is an alcohol problem here and if such a problem exists, what might be the causes of it. But when there is an individual problem, who can the person turn to? The self-labeled problem drinker is still trying to find out. I, I don't know, at this point I just... I, I don't know, I really don't know where to turn, I, and yet I know that if I just keep dealing with it myself, I, you know, I, I just get deeper and deeper into it. I, I hope I can maybe find somebody or something to really kind of pull myself out of it. Students can get counseling from the Arners, but that takes a lot of initiative on the part of the problem drinker. Alcoholics Anonymous is another option, but Mrs. Arner says it has its problems, too. I think AA has done some really good things for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, just personally, I think that it's not good for some people. Um, you have to really be committed to the whole AA philosophy in order to make it work. And I think that some of our students are not in a place to do that. I also think that the AA chapter here in town, although they've been very supportive of the students who've gone there, you know, you've probably heard this if you talked to anybody from that task force, that, it, that it's not the same social group, it's not the same educational background, it's not the same age. So it's real hard to sort of go into this group of older people from town and try to really relate. Is DePaul doing enough? Robert Rabb doesn't think so. I get so frustrated with Dean Moore and Dean Clare is there isn't any Program. One of the problems is lack of recognition. And nobody's willing to say, yes, we have a problem. Maybe we're finally going to admit we have a problem. President Rosser has formed an ad hoc committee of faculty, students, and administration to look into the alcohol situation at DePauw, a sign that perhaps the administration thinks there is a problem after all. In the past quarter hour, we've discussed alcohol use and misuse on the DePauw campus in a WGRE news documentary. You can see that there are no easy answers to the problems that may be present, and there is some question as to whether they can be considered problems or not. But one thing is for certain. Alcohol is, at the very least, in moderate use on the DePaul campus. If nothing else, we hope this documentary has opened your eyes to DePaul's drinking and, more importantly, your drinking. For Ed Lehman, I'm Ken Owen. Good night.